Hey guys, how are you guys doing this morning? We are the Metzger Nation and we have some of our children here today with us. Um, welcome to Kids Cast. If you guys have not liked the Kids Cast page, make sure that you go and do that and that you share this video if you enjoy it today um, so that your friends can benefit from maybe the tips that we're giving today too. Um, our family is the Metzger family. We are a second generation homeschooling family. Um, we live in the suburbs outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, we live in the, actually we live in the country. And if our connection kind of cuts out or gets spotty, just hang with us and hopefully it'll come back on, on board like it usually does. Um, one of the downsides of living in the country is that our internet connection is not perfect. So bear with us if we kind of go in and out or turn fuzzy, we should come back. Um, so be sure to um, like the KidCast page, like I said, and also to like our family's page, the Metzger Nation page, and you can get the spelling from the title in this video, but we have a page on Facebook where you can follow our family in our homeschooling adventures, our large family adventures. We have 12 children, three of them are adopted, ages um, 24 down to almost five months. Um, and you can follow us on that page, the Metzger Nation page on Facebook. We're also on Instagram. If you want to follow us there, Lisa Metzger Homeschool. We are a homeschool family. Um, but we would love to have you kind of join in in our life and kind of um, join us in that adventure. So today we are going to talk about kitchen efficiency. Um, I know that all of you moms out there are constantly in the kitchen, or at least you're aiming to be in the kitchen. Um, whether or not that actually happens kind of depends on how busy you are and what your priorities are and how you line up, um, how well you meal plan, how well you... Um, manage your family, and so that's kind of what we're talking today. I love to plan, I love to organize, I love to make sure all my ducks are in a row, um, which I kind of have to do with having that many kids. Um, and so these are just some of the tips that we have to share with you guys today. Um, so how many of you guys are busy moms? Let's see, who's with us today? I know that probably all of you would say, hey, that's me, I'm busy. Um, all of us have a jam-packed schedule, um, and as you can imagine, with 12 kids, our schedule is multiplied even greater with our busyness, um, and so we kind of probably have to be purposeful, right, to make sure that we are cooking at home, to make sure that we're um, intentional in planning our days, including our meals. Um, so I've, I'm sure that many of us, including our family, opts sometimes to maybe get takeout, maybe order pizza. Uh, because we haven't planned our day well enough. Um, sometimes it's just a necessity. It's, it's something that's convenient when we order pizza or whatever because our days are full and something unexpected comes up and we just need to, to opt for that quick fix. But the majority of the time that people, especially busy moms, end up ordering out or getting takeout, um, they probably don't need to do that. If they had planned, they probably wouldn't have seen themselves in that position. So planning is a really important thing for managing your household. Um, also, we have to ask ourselves, is takeout really a healthy way to take care of our family? Is takeout um, something that's going to benefit us long term? And the answer is no. Um, even when you're making healthy choices, um, with your foods when you're eating out, it's probably not as healthy as it would be if you were cooking from home. So you always want to make sure that you're as intentional as you can be um, in making sure that you have dinner on the table at night and that you have healthy snacks and healthy breakfast and lunch um, ready to go. Um, so one of the reasons that we like to um, make sure that we're eating healthy is a thing called leaky gut syndrome. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that. Um, it's kind of a, a hip term, I guess, in the health community right now. Um, people talk about it a lot. Um, but leaky gut syndrome, if you Google that and any kind of health issue that you might have, I think you'd be surprised to see how connected that is. Um, but I've been kind of teaching my kids about it. These are my, this is Julia and Ellie. Julia is 11 and Ellie is nine and they want to be midwives when they grow up. Um, they have seen all of um, my pregnancies, gone with me to my midwife appointments, and we call them the Metzger midwives because they would like to deliver babies when they get older. Um, so I've been teaching them about leaky gut syndrome, and so guys, let me ask you. Um, Ellie, what is your immune system? What does your immune system do for you? 
So your immune system helps fight disease. And how much of your immune system is actually in your gut, in your intestines? Do you remember? You remember? Oh, yeah. I do. Okay, what is it? 80%. 80%. So 80% of our immune system, our ability to fight infection and disease, is actually located in our intestines, in um, our digestive process. So when your intestines and the digestion process is not operating as it should, um, we get little holes in our intestines and those nutrients that we're thinking that we're ingesting or absorbing are actually not being absorbed and um, we're doing really, you know, we're eating very poorly. Guys, stop talking. Okay. They're having a conversation with the off-camera kids. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so when we get that little gap in our intestines, we're not... Um, we're not digesting, we're not actually absorbing those nutrients, are actually escaping through our intestines. So one way that we can actually develop leaky gut syndrome is by eating out, eating greasy food, eating things that are high in cholesterol, things that are just not good for us. So when we don't plan our day, when we don't have an efficient kitchen, an efficient plan, we are doing damage to our bodies, which does damage to our immune system, which makes us get sick. So I'm gonna step forward so I can see the comments because I see somebody. I spy P96. I spy P96. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute. Quick meals for moms. Um, so yeah, it, leaky gut is something that we want to avoid, and a way we can avoid that is by good planning. Um, so and it's also you know what when you eat at home and you're planning your meals and you're planning your budget and you're implementing that into your schedule, you are. Um, saving money as well. You're being efficient, not only with your time, not only with your health, but also with your money. So that's just some ways um, that we really want to, um, why we really want to plan our, our kitchen, have an efficient kitchen, have an efficient plan in action, involving our kids and that fun process of meal preparation. Um, so somebody said they spied P96. Okay, this is one of my favorite things. Now I think I mentioned before that I run my own uh, business out of my home um, doing my part-time and one of the things that I do it, that I sell is this great protein shake and I'm not trying to do a commercial I'm just really a huge fan of these how many of you moms skip breakfast or skip lunch because you get too busy um, because you're taking care of your kids and you're involved in their activities for the day and before you know it it's noon and you realize hey I, I miss breakfast or it's dinner time and you're like man I'm starving and you overeat at dinner um, or you or you order out or you grab something before you actually get home to make dinner and therefore accumulate more calories, contribute to that leaky gut. Um, you know, how many of you do that? I mean, I can say that I probably skip lunch. I don't skip breakfast because I love breakfast, but I have skipped lunch before just by getting too busy in the day. Well, a great thing to do and something you can plan ahead, and it doesn't take a whole lot of planning, is to have on hand just some protein shakes. Now, there's different ones out there, but my favorite is this one. Um, there's vanilla and chocolate and what I do is I either get the vanilla and I add fresh fruit to it um, strawberries and vanilla are really good and um, I add it to almond milk um, and I mix it up in my little magic bullet blender which is really good I think they're like at Sam's and Costco now but you can find them pretty cheap now um, I think when I bought them they're like 60 bucks but I think Mark said he had seen them on the market for like 30 now so check it out on Amazon they might have them then when I make the, pe the chocolate one, I add peanut butter powder, which is also your protein. Um, this has 19 grams of protein in it, but then this has some extra protein as well, and I just like peanut butter, so. And it's better than the actual peanut butter out of the jar, which has more calories. Um, this is just the powder, and it tastes really, really good, and it's good to add to your shake and your, um, your protein packet and your almond milk. So moms, don't use busyness as an excuse to skip breakfast to skip lunch because that's not a good excuse um you're going to order out you're going to um, consume more calories in a day Look like pieces, you said. oh <laughs> i do too um is it dairy free yes the p96 yes it is um and that's why i use the almond milk with it um because it's not you don't have the dairy and it's uh lower calories and just healthier for you so that's why i pair it with the almond milk um Okay, so let's talk about efficiency. Um, I know that my kitchen is kind of a dump zone, and I think most people have it as a dump zone where you get the mail for the day and you put it down on the counter and it accumulates. Um, you clear the table and um, 
Oh, you have a, oh, yeah, so you got to be careful of allergies. Always read the back of, I'm sure you know this, the back of um, any label that you're, um, of any food that you're consuming or whatever. So just make sure um, that you do that. But, yeah, check out that and just see if that happens to um, maybe go along with his allergy. Um, you certainly wouldn't want them ingesting something that would harm them. Um, but anyway, so a kitchen is a dump zone for most moms. Um, yes, this is gluten-free and GMO-free as well. That's, that's another thing I like about that. And it's not um, made from animal protein either. So that's really good. It's all plant-based. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'm a big fan of B96. Um, so uh, your dump zone, your kitchen is your dump zone. You have everything out on the counters. It's a mess. Um, you can't work in a mess, so you need to plan ahead to, you know, get rid of that, that messiness. Um, and so you want to keep your kitchen orderly. My thing is don't lay it down, put it away. So as soon as it comes in, the kids place the, ma the mail on the counter. I'm going through it. I'm separating it. I'm putting it in my husband's pile if he needs to look at it. I'm tossing out junk mail. It does not stay on the counter long. I think that's really important. Another thing is every time you enter a room, I have this habit. I'm trying to teach it to my kids. I've taught it to them in the past, but not Nothing gets retained long term unless you keep going over it. So um, I go over, you know, I need to probably go over this again with them. But when they go into a room, pick up two things that don't belong there and put them away. Um, oh, I heard Ripple is better than almond milk, she said. More, more nutritious. Okay, Erica, I've never, I've never tried that. So there you go. There's something new, new to try. So always when you go into a room, pick up two things, put them away. That way you don't end up with a mess. You can do the same thing with the kitchen. Creates um, orderliness and, and then you're more apt to, you know, plan your meals to make your meals and to get it done quickly and efficiently. Um, so when you're creating efficiency in your kitchen, you want to ask yourself some questions and you want to observe um, before you actually redo your kitchen. So say, you're, say um, ask yourself these questions. When you go to look for something, are you digging in the back of a cabinet? Are you, um, you know, reaching in the back of the cabinet, digging through a drawer? Um, are you wasting time that way? If the answer is yes, if you find yourself doing that when you're working in the kitchen, if you find yourself doing that, I want you to put it down on a notepad. Hold that, get that notepad out. Write down all the things you don't like about your kitchen. Um, if you don't like those, look for a way that you can make it easier. If you're digging in the back of a cabinet to get something frequently, then that item needs to be moved forward and something you don't use as much needs to be moved backwards. Even if it looks nice on your counter, if you have your KitchenAid mixer and you don't use it all the time, you need to be putting it down in a way um, and put something else that you would use regularly in its place. It's just going to help you to work that space better. Um, so ask yourself, why am I doing this? Why am I, why do I have this item here? And is it logically accessible? So make sure that you're asking yourself that, that you're jotting down your answers and that that will help you plan out how to organize your kitchen so that you can use it more efficiently. Um, store infrequently used, um, items high, like above your fridge or whatever in those high cabinets way up high and, and store the ones that you would use more often low. Obviously, I think some of us are probably like, well, that's a no-brainer, and yeah, it probably is, but some people don't think about that. Um, they just, you know, aren't maybe as organized as the next person, and that's okay, but, you know, rethink that. Um, if it's not used, put it up high. If it's used more often, put it down low and within reach. Saves your time. Um, also, something we do is um, it, we have really big bottom drawers. Jake, you want to pan down here, and Julia, you want to go up in that drawer down there, the two drawers with the cups and the... Something we do, we have our dishwasher here. I think you can see the dishwasher right here. And uh, those two drawers, you can just stand by those drawers, honey. Um, and we keep the kids' plastic plates and cups in the bottom drawer. And up above, we keep their plastic cups. We're able to empty the dishwasher super fast. But it's see how low they are? So when the kids are thirsty, um, they can, I'm trying to scroll down, there we go. Um, they can access those so when they're thirsty, they're not saying, Mom, I need a cup, and I have to go up to the cabinet and get it out of the cabinet. It's right there at arm's length. Now, one of the things that can happen is the toddlers get into the cups or the plates or whatever. You got to keep an eye on toddlers, obviously. And, yeah, that can be a little bit of a headache, but I think with a little bit of training, a little bit of instruction, you know, that, uh, that time period only lasts a little bit, and this ends up being more, more beneficial you know, for your kids being able to access things so that you're not constantly having to help them while you're prepping a meal when they want a glass of water or whatever. So that just makes it easier. Um, some other things that you want to think about too is your centers. 
um, that you have in your kitchen. Whether you realize it or not, um, you have the ability, no matter how small your kitchen is, to have cooking or prep centers. Um, ideas to organize a spice cabinet. Well, that's what I have thought about, but maybe we'll touch on that a little bit as to how I did it. Um, we have a Lazy Susan in the corner that we use, and we um, buy most of our spices at Sam's Club because we're a large family and need those large bulk spices. Um, and so we keep them all in there in the Lazy Susan cabinet, which is really good. But I know there's a lot of organizational tools um, and little gadgets and stuff on Amazon. So if you get on an or and you know look in the Amazon search bar for spice cabinet organization, I bet you they'd have a ton of stuff there that you could use. And Pinterest, love Pinterest. I bet you they have some, some cool ideas too. Another thing people don't realize is you can actually freeze fresh herbs um, and spices. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit later when I talk about our garden. Um, so um, centers are, are centers that we have in our kitchen for cooking. Okay, there's you can have a cutting and a sink center. And I'm gonna go over here. This is... Um, you can, you can make sure it's seen because I can't really see that far away. Um, but we have a prep sink. Um, our main sink's over there, but our prep sink is here. And so this is where you can prep. This little cutting board is kind of neat. Um, I don't know that we use it all the time, but, but it is neat. Um, yeah, more in the summertime, you're right. Yeah, when we're making our stewed tomatoes out of our garden and stuff like that. But this is a pretty cool little thing. We're able to cut our, our fresh foods and veggies. So this is our cutting and our sink center. Underneath here, we have our um, colanders for rinsing out vegetables. And in here, we have um, our cutting boards. And so this is kind of like our prep center. Everything that we need is pretty much within reach, except for the knives, because we want to keep them out of the way of little ones. So we put them way over there up high on a countertop. So we want to make sure that, you know, there's still safety involved. But basically, everything that, that won't harm them is right in this area, so that we're able to access it. We're not running all over the kitchen. So I think that's really important. Then there's the cooking center. The cooking center would include your pots, your pans, your cooking oil, maybe if you have room, rice, pasta, cooked cereals, serving dishes, platters, trays, timers, etc. stuff like that. So anything you would use for cooking would be in your cooking center. So you have your prep center, and then you have your cooking center, and then your baking center. We actually have that in the corner. We have a cabinet that's designated for all of our spoons, all of our mixing bowls, our um, the, uh, cookie cooling racks, um, measuring spoons, everything you can think of as far as baking would go is right there. Now our pantry would house our flour and sugar and stuff like that, but if you don't have a pantry or if you have room in that baking center, that might be something you want to add there as well. But you want to keep everything, at least your tools, if not your um, ingredients in that um, baking center. Then there's a serving center. Um, our serving center, we have all of our dishes up on top here and our silverware in these two drawers, but we have um, all of our trays and everything on this end and our uh, hot pads and things like that so that we have our serving center and, and everything all relatively together, all the silverware is spread out. So that's another center that you can have. Your refrigerator center, you can have um, your Ziploc bags, your containers, your little Rubbermaid storage containers for leftovers, your marking pens, your twisty ties, rubber bands, aluminum foil, batteries and extension cords. I put there because I need to access those often in the kitchen if I'm running cords somewhere, if we're you know baking big time, stromboli, that's our big family thing. If we need extension cords, they're all right there, batteries, etc. So that is my, um, my refrigerator center or my container center. Um, so that would all stay together. Um, another center that you might want to consider if your family is big into salads, if you have salads every meal, our family has salads every dinner. Um, you might want to have a salad center and kind of compile everything you would need, maybe a salad spinner or things like that in that salad center. If you juice a lot, you could have a juicing center. Um, you can have a coffee bar um, center. We have our little coffee bar center over there on the counter where we have our... Um, our little containers with our coffee in it and our coffee maker and things like that. So you can have that as well. Um, but bottom line, when you're looking at your kitchen and you're making your notes, that's all great and everything, but I want to encourage you, don't this afternoon go into your kitchen and just start tearing things apart. Um, you want to make mental note of it first. You want to think about it. Would this actually work before I tear my kitchen apart? Plan, then implement. But remember to implement, implement too. Don't forget to implement just because you've gotten all excited, you know, with planning or because you want to make sure you have all, you know, everything just right. 
um, but also just don't go in this afternoon and tear things apart. Think things through. That's what you want to do. Okay, so I know that with creating efficiency in your kitchen, you have so many tools available to you. Um, I call them our butlers and our maids. Um, let me see. <laughs> Um, we have our butlers and our maids. So my butler, my maid would be things like our dishwasher, our washing machine, our dryer, our pressure cooker, our convection ovens. Our, our two ovens that we have, um, they have the convection oven feature, which is really cool because we can cook things fast. Um, it works like a convection oven. So we use that a lot during holidays or when we're having big uh, meals or a lot of people over. Uh, rice cookers, um, dishwashers, I said stock pots and self-clean ovens. A lot of people don't realize how much time that saves. Are you implementing your maids and your butlers? Are you using the tools that you have in your kitchen efficiently? Assess that. Say, am I, am I taking too long to make rice because you know I'm putting it in a pot or whatever? Should I get a rice cooker? Would that be a wise investment? Look, a lot of times Amazon has their little lightning sales or whatever, and you can get pressure cookers, um, rice cookers, crock pots, things like that that will actually save you time in the long run. So you wanna make sure that, um, that you're using your tools and that you're making a good list for Christmas or birthdays or whatever. Um, so, okay, let's talk about some cooking shortcuts, okay? Our family loves to have cooking shortcuts and we have a lot of them here today. Jake, maybe you can move the camera down here. Jake is my 12 year old and he is, <laughs> that was him popping in. He is my cameraman today. Kind of help them. You can just put it right here, guys. You want to put it right here? Okay, so cooking shortcuts. So we're going to talk about some of the ones that we did. Now, a big cooking shortcut that you guys might think actually is, is going to take longer, but it actually cuts time in the long run, is meal planning. If you guys didn't see our meal planning video on KidCast, make sure that you do that. Um, I think it was back in January that we did that meal planning one. Um, so look back at the beginning of January, but it was, um, it, it, we talked a lot about how meal planning helps and how our family does it with our large family, but it can be made for any family size. Meal planning saves time. I um, guess it's a little bit of an investment at the beginning of every month, but it really can go quickly once you have um, your staple meal plan. It's your general one with just a few little switch ups every month. Um, also, clean as you go. I always teach my kids clean as you go. So if you're cutting an onion, um, put, have the scrap bag, we have chickens, so have the scrap bag ready for the chickens, put your scraps in there um, so that they're ready to go out and clean as you go. Don't leave all the scraps for the chicken on the counter while you go and assemble the rest of the casserole. Clean up as you go and it'll save time. Um, so here's some other cooking shortcuts, eggs. Okay, a good way to save money is to buy eggs in bulk. We live out in the country, so we have a big um, egg production facility, you know, down the road, farmer, egg farmer, and we can go to them and we can purchase, how many eggs is it? 30, 30 dozen eggs for, what is it, 30? Uh, 30 bucks. 30 bucks. Um, <laughs> and they're, they're fresh. They're like right, right there and you can go get them. Another thing we do is we look out for sales on eggs. If we can get them for less than a dollar a dozen, we might, um, yeah, 69 cents a dozen. We just got them at Aldi the other day. So we stock up on eggs. Um, a good way to, to save time on breakfast is to make hard boiled eggs. You can make them for salads, but you can make a whole bunch of them at one time and just store them in. We, after we make them hard boiled, we put HB on the, on the top of the egg in like a, a marker or whatever so that we're able to see quickly um, which, which ones we've already hot, hard boiled. They also make really healthy snacks. Um, eggs are high in protein, which is really important for growing kids and, and, um, and stuff. So uh, eggs are a great way. Another way you can save money with eggs is to raise chickens. Um, like I mentioned, when we're doing the onions or whatever, or any kind of meal prep that where we have scraps left over, it all goes to the chickens. We never have anything wasted. It's either compost pile or chickens, but really it pretty much all goes to the chickens now. Um, chickens can save money, and you can also have really good eggs. Yeah, Ethan's holding up a chicken egg. That's one of our chicken's eggs. Um, so we get through eggs pretty fast, but chickens are a great way to save money. And then the eggs taste so much better than mass produced eggs. Whether you buy them at the store or from the egg, uh, egg farmer, chicken farmer. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, to raise your own, it just, you can even tell when you break open the yolk, the yolk is like bright yellow as opposed to, you know, just your normal yellow yolk chicken egg. 
Um, so such a big difference. Um, and it also saves money. So, and you're not wasting any of your scraps. So awesome. Um, well, um, how would you do chickens with, she asked, how would you do chickens with uh, mostly little kids and no older kids? Um, I know Sarah has mostly little kids. I have bigger kids, so that helps. But honestly, you can uh, work it into your day. Uh, chickens are not really that high maintenance, honestly. We don't let ours free range because we have too many wild animals around here. We have coyotes and hawks and all kinds of stuff. Our chickens wouldn't, wouldn't last very long. So we keep them in a... a Coop and they have a big long cover run area um, and so if I didn't have any big kids probably how I would do it is all the scraps at dinner at a meal maybe take it out after dinner that night maybe after I got the kids settled down dump it all into the um, chicken run you know for the for the next day for them to eat um, worst case scenario you know you got all that all that food in the chicken run overnight lots of bugs come in chickens eat the bugs so I mean it all works out <laughs> So that's probably what I do as far as cleaning out the coop. Um, you could do that while the little ones are outside with you. Give them an activity nearby um, while you're cleaning out the chicken coop. That's probably some things that I would look to implement. But I think that it really, um, it doesn't take as long as people think. Again, it's a whole planning thing um, where, you know, you just got to plan out your, your chore schedule around your kids' activities. Maybe during nap time you could go out and change the, the chicken hay, what do you call it? Yeah. Step in. Uh, you can roost. talk. The roost. You only have to clean the roost uh, once a month, though. Okay. And, and, and the it water only takes like 15 now. minutes. Because we have a roost in our coop, so uh, we only have to clean the chicken coop once a month. Yeah. That way. Because all their stuff goes underneath the. Yeah, we have our. We'll have to maybe show one time our chicken coop and how it's set up. But our roost allows everything to kind of fall down and then it's, it's raked out and it can be used in. Um, for garden fertilizer for the next year, um, there's ways to do that. So that kind of, again, cuts down on the upkeep. So if you really plan ahead, as with all things in life, you really can cut down your time with that chore. Um, so I do highly recommend chicken eggs and raising chickens. Plus it's kind of an in thing to do now. So I think you, there's so many more resources out there and so many more people doing it, you can kind of um, pick their brains as to how to, how to do that efficiently. So another way that we have uh, shortcuts in our cooking is to buy large amounts of beef. Now you can do this by buying um, a part of a cattle. You're welcome, Sarah. Um, part of a, a cattle, um, there's lots of ways you can buy like grass-fed beef, grain-fed beef, whatever, um, directly from the farmer, like an eighth of a cow, fourth of a cow, half a cow, even a whole cow. Um, and you can freeze it in different uh, cuts. Um, but one, we haven't done that yet because we just yeah. don't have enough uh, freezer space. We do do it with deer. You are right. Venison. Um, when we have friends that hunt, Mark hunts because he isn't patient enough to actually stand the stand long. So he isn't actually ever shot anything. But our friends give us venison during hunting season. And we freeze that in different cuts. And then uh, we make a ton of ground beef. Um, and we actually make it all at once. So as he's grinding up the venison, or after we go to Sam's Club and buy the big tube of beef, um, I don't remember, it's pretty inexpensive. You can buy a big tube of beef and you cook it all at once. Um, so uh, that's a really good way to buy in bulk um, and go ahead and brown all your beef ahead of time. Um, and then you can store it. Ethan over, or Ethan, Judah over here, and Annalise are working on browning some turkey uh, meat that we had gotten that they're going to brown so that we can freeze it in meal size portions um, for later. So she is teaching him how to brown beef. Now, obviously, he wouldn't do that by himself for a while yet. He is eight years old, but he's learning how, which is really important to involve your kids in the kitchen chores so that they're excited when they're of age to be able to do that. Um, but when we brown our beef, we put it in these little freezer containers. This one's thawing out for dinner tonight. This is a freezer container. You can buy it. Um, we buy it up in Pennsylvania at some outlet store, some kitchen outlet store. Um, but you can find them online, I'm sure. Amazon has everything. But we freeze our, our things in one pound portions like this. Our family eats more than one pound in one sitting, but you know. You can also um, freeze them in bags, which we've done in the past when we've run out of freezer containers. And you, I put them in one of these freezer bags first, and then I put, that stores about a pound, and then I put them in the large gallon size, and you can freeze them that way. 
Um, so that really saves on time when you brown your ground beef ahead of time. You can brown it and just do it plain, or you can add spices for like a quick Mexican meal, um, you know, add your Mexican spices for it um, and do it that way. Or you can make meatballs and you can actually freeze meatballs on a um, flat cookie sheet and then put them into a bag after they're frozen. You can freeze meatloaf which it makes for a quick meal. If you know that you have a, a day where you're gonna be busy all day long, um, you can take that meatloaf out of the freezer and just cook it. So um, that's a really good way to do it. And then in the morning of use, you just set it out to thaw. Um, so that is a huge, huge time saver. Um, let's see. Oh, another thing I didn't talk about, cutting onions ahead of time. When we're making a meal, um, you can cut double the onions so that you, if you know you're going to have onions twice in a row, we use a lot of onions in our cooking. You can put it in a little container for use the next time. Um, or you can put it in a Ziploc bag again and freeze it because onions do freeze okay as long as you're not using them for something that's, um, that you, you know, uncooked for. You actually, you do need to cook them if you've frozen them because they get really mushy. But if you're, it's in the middle of a casserole, it really doesn't matter. You can freeze them. But if you cut, you know, six onions instead of three at once, you know, that's going to save you time later on. So get it done, freeze it, put it up, and be able to take it down for a quick meal. Um, another thing you can do is you can soak a large amount of um, dry beans. So we have our beans here. Um, you can soak a whole bunch of those the night before, and then you cook the beans on low. Um, I always add some garlic to them because garlic helps um, with digestion of beans. Um, it helps things go easier. So I add some garlic to them and I cook them in the crock pot on low all day long. And I just kind of make sure that the water is kept up um, so that they don't get too dry or get too mushy. And then you take them out and you can actually freeze beans as well if you're using them in a casserole or in a chili. You can freeze them after they're cooked or even before they're cooked, after they're rinsed and everything. Beans are great for freezing. Um, and that, that just saves time. Um, you can make bone broth or soup with leftover chicken or turkey carcasses. So if you get like rotisserie chicken or you make a rotisserie chicken, you can take that carcass and actually make bone broth or make soup from it. And that's a really good way. Um, you can freeze that bone broth for when you're sick or for use in another recipe. Um, that's a really good way to save time um, and to efficiently um, use what you bought um, extra, you know. So, um, and so you, we freeze big whole chickens like this too. These are, these are frozen solid right now. And you can freeze those and then cook them um, in a pressure cooker from frozen state. Um, or you can cook them um, maybe for a stew or a soup or something like that and then use their carcass, make some bone broth. So that's a really good way to do that. Um, another thing we do is we buy, we buy even pans bigger than this for these silver disposable you know, pans, you can buy them in bulk at Sam's Club um, or Costco, which are large wholesale um, food stores. And you can make um, and freeze such things as meatloaf. Um, you can uh, make it double, like our church, we have a fellowship meal after church, and we will take one of our meals during the week, and we will double our normal portion. So we actually make it because we usually quadruple recipes because of the size of our family, so we would make it times eight. And then you can put it in here, cover it in foil, keep it in the fridge, and it's ready for the fellowship meal on Sunday. Um, so you don't have any of that prep the, the morning of or the night before. So that saves time on the weekend, more time for family. Um, so make things, double them, triple, quadruple, whatever your family would require so that you're able to um, efficiently use your time and you have a meal ready to go um, in the freezer or in the fridge because you planned ahead, because you made extra. So that's a really good way to, to save time. Okay, um, as far as saving money when you're shopping or in the kitchen, um, don't go to the store hungry. I'm sure you guys have all heard this before. Um, I actually have to go to the store hungry or otherwise I'll come home with nothing because everything just looks gross. But I think for most people it kind of makes them, um, it makes them buy more when they are hungry. So you want to be careful and kind of note that. Um, also, buy store brand. Most things, it does not matter if you buy um, store brand or, um, or the name brand items. That will save money. Um, buy only what you need and will use. So if you are not sure that you're going to use you know, this item that you found on sale, don't buy it. Don't buy it because you're going to waste pantry space. You're going to 
possibly never even use it, and then that money that you thought you were saving, you've actually spent and wasted. So don't buy something you don't need. Buy dry goods in bulk, and when they're on sale, this is our rice container. This is actually um, a food grade dog food container. <laughs> it was not used for dog food prior to this, it was brand new. But we store our 50 pound bag of rice in there, and I've labeled it with a cute little um, label with the chalkboard pen or whatever, and then this is stored in the bottom of our pantry because we use a lot of rice, and we buy it in bulk, and we save money. So always make sure you do that. Um, then let's see, buy in-season produce. If you go to the store and you know there's things on sale, in-season produce, plan your meals around those produce items because that's really gonna pay off. And plus it's fun to look forward to, you know, certain seasonal items, cooking them, eating them, um, when you know they're in season. So it gives you something to look forward to and it also saves money. Um, one rule we have in our family is, especially for the size of our family, it's kind of important, but honestly, I probably did this even if I only had one or two children, is no open fridge or open pantry access, meaning they can't just go into the fridge or the pantry and just consume whatever is in there because I've usually planned a meal around it or the girls have usually planned a meal around it. We're going to need that on Thursday, and if we go Thursday and they've eaten whatever it is that they felt like eating earlier in the week, we're not gonna have it on hand. So we don't have, we have the rule of no open fridge access. You have to ask. If you want a snack, see, what's, see what, we've, um, what we have on hand for snack. If you wanna you know, make something special for lunch, if it's your turn to make lunch, you wanna make something special, check with us first to make sure it's not in a meal plan later in the week. Um, so that's something we have that saves on money and it saves on uh, planning. Because otherwise you're going to go out on Thursday, you're going to be looking for that thing that your child ate earlier in the week for a snack. And you're going to end up ordering out. Or you're going to end up having to run out to the grocery store and you're wasting time, wasting money. So um, all that's just a rule we have. I think that's a really good rule to have. So another way to start, save money is to start a garden. So we have, it's not really a garden, it's more like a field. <laughs> It is a field behind our barn and Mark um, and the boys run that garden. Our boys love gardening. And so uh, we grow anything from peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, melons of all different kinds, peppers of all different like kinds. Those. Yeah, see Ethan's passionate about his garden. He's sitting there adding to the raccoons. Raccoons like that. Raccoons yeah. like it, yes. Yeah, we had an issue with raccoons last year. So three. Um, but we have, that saves us so much money. We also have an herb garden out front where we grow um, basil and this year oregano and cilantro and things like that. And it's really good to, um, yeah, the cilantro is still growing, but it kind of tastes, kind of tastes better. But anyway, um, and we grow lettuce and stuff out there as well in the next herb garden. So, um, and what we do is when we have our herbs, see, we took one of these old uh, Sam's Club spice containers and we dry basil. You can dry basil and other um, herbs um, in your oven at 200 degrees. And then you kind of, what I do is I, I lay it all out on a cookie sheet with a piece of foil, lay out all the basil leaves, and then I pop it in the oven until it is dry. It needs to be really dry and crunchy. And then I don't include the stems, but just the leaves and squish them up so that um, they're able to be flaked up and put in here. Super easy. You know it's organic because it's been grown in your garden, so you're saving money on organic items. Um, you can also freeze it if you have a really large amount. Basil, another good thing to do with basil is to make pesto. We make our old, uh, our own homemade pesto, um, and then we freeze it. So you can see this one's frozen solid. You can also use it as a marinade for chicken. Um, but I don't know, you guys probably know that in the store, um, pesto is pretty pricey. You can make pesto pretty inexpensively at home um, during a garden season and put up a whole bunch of it, freeze a whole bunch of it for pastas or um, marinades for chickens or whatever um, for year-round use and to use the other basil to make um, for your dry herbs. So that's a really good thing to do. Another thing we do um, is stewed tomatoes. And this is, as you can see, we have this big gallon bag with smaller bags inside. Um, that are our freezer bags and this is our stewed tomatoes that we use in soups and stews and casseroles year-round. It saves so much money. If you add up the cost, um, especially with a family our size with stewed tomatoes, you're going to be spending a lot um, year-round. And we save so much money by making our own stewed tomatoes, bagging them up, putting them in the freezer, using them as needed. Um, and we 
freeze them in meal size portions or we take two of them out for a meal, you know, if that's just what we require in our family. Um, you can make spaghetti sauce with tomatoes, um, pizzas, um, with oregano that you could grow in your garden, you can make oregano oil, which is a really good natural antibiotic. Um, excellent. Um, you can grow garlic, which also makes a great antibiotic um, that you can use when you're sick or whatever. Um, oregano oil also, um, for those of you that don't know, it's really good for sicknesses. Um, you can use it. It helps with viral and bacterial um, illnesses, and you can use it even on babies as long as it's very diluted on their feet if they have a cough or something like that. Um, so yeah, I'm a huge fan of oregano oil and it's super easy to make. Um, and as long as you're, you know, you can grow it in your garden or whatever, it's super easy to make too, even if you don't have a garden to grow it in. But that's one thing I like. You can also grow peppermint, rosemary, thyme, things like that that you would use in your kitchen. You can use it fresh and you can dry it uh, for later use. Another thing we do with our garden to save money in our kitchen and to create a more efficient kitchen is pickles. We make our own pickles, make our own, um, these are pickled uh, are they? jalapeno peppers, um, and we use them in our stromboli. Um, and let's see. Yeah, 140 left. Awesome. And they could also plain. No, just normal pickles, stuff like that. Yeah. What did you say? Those aren't good. Oh, we've canned 140 cans of pickles. Come. We canned 140 cans of pickles last year, and then about 20 of different types of peppers. Jalapeno peppers are really good to eat plain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're spicy. They are spicy. They're good though. So yeah, we really make efficient use of our garden, and our kids, especially Ethan and Trey and Jake and Judah, really enjoy having their little space in the garden to grow things. So another thing that we need to think about is when you're putting all these things in the freezer that you're making or that you're buying on sale and freezing, you want to have a freezer inventory. So you want to keep a list of what you have because otherwise you'll look at something that was frozen six years ago and be like, oh, that was in the back of my freezer. So make sure you're keeping a freezer inventory and that you plan your meals about around what's in your freezer. That saves you money, saves you time, um, saves you having to think through um, what should I make this week. If you have your whole chickens in the freezer that you, you know, bought a couple weeks ago or whatever, then you can, it's a no-brainer. What's for dinner next Tuesday? Oh, chicken, because we haven't used it. So, less brain power. So, I'm all about that. Um, okay, so as far as involving your kids in the in the kitchen, like you see Judah back there making the, um, you know, this is teaching him how to make, the, how to brown the, the ground beef. But this is also... Um, something we do. Okay, Emmy, come here. Eva. So Emmy and Eva, who have lost interest in sitting around, I probably should have done them first. But um, Emmy is four and Eva is six. And so this is a way that you can get your preschoolers involved in the kitchen. Um, when you're making beans, um, you know, you're supposed to rinse them off in the colander or whatever. And sometimes there's little rocks in there. So you can sit the preschoolers down with your colander full of beans and they can pick out the rocks and everything. Um, it gives them something to do while you're working on something else in the kitchen and, and it helps you and it makes them feel responsible for something. So I highly recommend that. Um, then let's see, another thing they can do is they can use measuring cups. Where's your measuring cups, Emmy? And where's your measuring spoons, Eva? Yeah, they can use that to measure out your rice or your sugar or your flour, whatever you're using in a recipe. And then they're learning at a very young age about things, measurements like cups, half cups, quarter cups, uh, teaspoons, tablespoons. And at that time you can teach them, hey, guess what? Three teaspoons equals a tablespoon, things like that. So you're incorporating them into your family routine and you're um, having them help you because even though it's a little bit more of an investment of time on your part to teach them how to do this, um, it pays off in the long run to help you out and it helps them out when they become adults and they're cooking their own meals. They already have that, that skill set, that knowledge to be able to meal plan, to be able to measure out things, to be able to cook and bake and everything. So involving them at super young ages is really good and they don't have to do a lot to be involved, um, but you can teach them skills. So can you stand for just a second here? Another thing we can do, and we should want to help them set up the beans is you can make, take a little mason jar, and we have black beans and white northern beans here. 
and they put them in layers so that they're using fine motor skills to put together this little layered bean and they can make it look really nice and they can show their creation to everyone and then we can make a meal out of it. So it's something to keep them entertained while you're over there cutting an onion or whatever. They're sitting there sorting through the little the beans, getting the rocks out of the beans or sorting through here. Um, can you check on the comments? I, I, I know they aren't working. Oh, okay. Our comments are not working for some reason. We're not seeing them. So I will go back through afterwards if you guys make any comments and I will um, comment on this for you. Um, so as you can see, they're doing that. Another cool thing that they can do is, um, you know the little cheese shakers that are full of toothpicks? They can take the toothpicks and put them into the little tiny holes in the cheese shaker so that you have your toothpicks on hand, but it gives them something to do, fine motor skills again. Um, Young grade schoolers or preschoolers can also learn how to pour water. Okay, so I know some of you, this might be a little bit too messy, but I only filled this up a quarter of the way so that it wouldn't make too big of a mess if they spill it. The girls want you to go ahead and practice pouring water so they're learning um, how to pour things. It helps with dexterity. Um, and then if they spill some, I mean, show what you do when some, when some spills. You wipe it up, and then what do you do? Stand by just a second. What do you do with the wet wrap? Uh, Remember? Yes. You throw it outside. That's where we put we put our rags in a in a can up laundry basket until they're ready to be washed. But if you put if you spill some, we can have them wipe the cabinets down. One of even Emily's chores is to go through and wipe down the cabinets in our kitchen. Um, to make sure all the little fingerprints are off of it and everything so that things maintain, you know, cleanliness to some degree anyway. Um, and they can take um, the spilled water from their pouring practice and they can clean the cabinets or clean the baseboards or clean, you know, the floor where something else spilled. Um, so it gets them helping you again in the kitchen um, and also teaches them skills. So that's a really good thing to do. Another good thing is to have your kids um, take over a cooking day. So, um, or a cooking time. Okay, so our older girls who are 17 and 24, um, they have pretty much taken over, they've taken over dinner. So they meal plan, they, um, they cook for us every night, every night. I hate cooking, I've worked myself out of a job, is what I say. Um, I oversee, I might help add some spices in, but for the most part, they're doing all the cooking. Um, their husbands will be super pleased, although they might be overfed when they first get married because they'll be used to cooking for 14 and they'll go from cooking for 14 down to cooking for two. So that should be interesting to see. However, um, for now, that really helps me. I would rather clean or organize than I would cook. Um, and they like to cook, so win-win. Um, yeah, Kaylin doesn't like to cook, but she's gonna learn to cook anyway. So, um, and uh, we also teach our boys how to cook. Um, they start off right now, they're taking over um, breakfast and, and lunch. lunch and lunch prep. Yeah, you boys, you want to tell a little bit about what you do for breakfast and lunch? Um, Come on, Jake. We, oh, he's my make, camera man for the day. <laughs> you make oatmeal normally for breakfast on Mondays, and on um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do cereal and uh, on Wednesdays we do bread, and on Fridays we do some other smaller breakfasts. And on either Saturday or Sunday, uh, we will do a big breakfast, and on the other day we'll do cereal. So that's yeah. our breakfast. So they offer something quick on a day where we really need to get up and get going fast, um, and they put a little bit more time in when they have more time. So, and then prepping things the night before is also a big thing. When he said they make bread, they make some kind of a, a sweet bread of some kind for breakfast. So that's what they do with that. Um, so uh, if you think about it, involve your kids in meal planning, involve your kids, maybe give them a day to cook if they're old enough, give them a day to, um, to prep, maybe a meal to cut some onions if they're wanting to cut things or something. Oh good, she get finished. Rita wants to show you his ground turkey bean. So that's cool. Judah did a good job. That was his first time doing that. Um, and I'm really big on having the older kids um, teach the skill sets that they've learned to the younger kids because it really um, helps to ingrain in them. Now, Annalise is 24, so it, she's got it down pat. But for an older child, I might be teaching a younger child some skill set. Um, it's actually 
putting it, com concreting it in their mind, the older child's mind, as they're teaching it to the younger child. So I'm really big on that. So um, I don't know. I think that's about it for today. So basically, if you can just cook in bulk, buy in bulk um, as much as you're able, um, brown things ahead of time, prep stuff ahead of time, maybe grow your own garden, buy eggs from a farmer in bulk, um, buy when they're on sale, make some hard-boiled eggs. Things like that, just cut down on time. Organizing your kitchen efficiently um, can help cut down on time too, and it just takes a load off your back when you don't have to worry about um, where to find things or um, waste time taking too many steps in a kitchen back and forth between one area and the next. And then involving your kids is key. So, um, in teaching them and teaching the next, gen next generation about the family recipes, um, about how to cook and how to clean and how to maintain order in your house, that is just so important. And then moms, I'm telling you, don't skip those breakfasts, don't skip those lunches. Plan ahead for yourself. Plan ahead for yourself. Protein shakes, great way to do that. Um, and, oh, and girls, look at what they finished just in time. That looks really good, even Emmy. That's excellent. So they layered their beans. It kept them busy, their little hands busy for a time. And then we can use that in cooking. So very nice, ladies. Very nice. So um, again, if you have not liked um, the KidCast page, make sure that you go and do that. And also like our family's page as well. We are the Metzger Nation. Um, you can find us on Facebook and um be sure to share this video if it was of, of use to you and was something uh, worthwhile. But we look forward to seeing you again soon, and we hope that you have a blessed day. All right, bye.